Nice fish, guys. On today's show, ice fishing has changed a lot in the last 10 years, but this past winter, another big change made headlines on Upper Red Lake. It's time to hop Otter's Ice Train. And what's it really mean to introduce a kid to the great outdoors? We joined three kids on the lake for their very first ice fishing experience. Put both your hands on them. Put both your hands. <laughs> And later, Laura Shera is back in the kitchen, this time cooking up a favorite. How about a little walleye on a hoagie? That is so good. Those stories and more, next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know, if you're looking for a place to catch walleyes in the wintertime, you really can't go wrong with Upper Red Lake in northern Minnesota. So some folks decided to make it quite an event. They all brought their otters and made a train out on the lake. Bill Shirk has a story. Winter days sure seems short. The crew at Rogers Resort knows better. We got this group here, this group of six fans. This guy's going into Mickey's house? Yeah. Yep. Curtis Freudenberg gets cracking before first light. This morning we have a meeting every day before we go out, what guys are coming in, what guys are leaving. And specifically, who gets to hang with Brad? You got some rainbows in there? Oh yeah. Brad Hothel. Red Link's big time up and comer. Every morning I come in and I get a scoop of fatheads in my coffee can. She usually gives me a lucky minnow or two. All right. Thanks, Mary. Now, to the ranger. Ah, yes, the ranger. The real curiosity behind Brad's frosty tail. Just like morning coffee, a little bit of exhaust. See, Brad engineered a most unique idea. Red Lake's very first train. We have six otters in tow behind us. With the Ranger, I can get to areas that you can't get to with a four-wheeler or get that type of equipment to with a snowmobile. And, you know, it, it kind of looks cool going across the lake, too. Today, Brad guides his otter train towards a single orange stake buried out on Red Lake. See it? Got a bunch of fish right here, so this stake marks a good fishing area. Now, Brad works. Setting the portables up is probably the longest part of my day. Burn up the auger. It takes anywhere from an hour to two hours to get the portable set up, drilled, and heated. All this before most folks even pour a first cup of morning coffee. And as soon as we're done getting the train set up, then we go grab some customers and get them out here and hopefully catch some fish. Today, Brad guides a crew from St. Paul. Dan Tao and his buddies, first timers on the Otter Train. You guys been planning to come up here for two years? Now, Brad doesn't just put his clients on fish. A lot of times that, that pause is absolutely key. He takes the time to teach them, to catch them, too. Think the nuances of hooking Red Lake gold. There we go. <laughs> nice work. Is this your first Red Lake walleye? Hit hard. It was amazing. First walleye through the ice. So goes life as Red Lake's winter conductor. How's it going in there? In no time, Brad's anglers catch keepers and even dream of a few trophies. Oh, there you go. Ooh, you want? That looks like a better one. By far the best fish I had on today. Oh, and you know what? It came out right at the hole. Well, too bad for me. We're, we're fishing comfortable. It's really cold out, but we're staying warm. And most importantly, nice fish, guys. People have fun. Bill, let's get a smile, man. <laughs> As you see, I don't fish, so he does all the hard work. Oh, there's a nice wallet. Proof the winter can be cool. <laughs> Get it? All right, this again, dude. No problem. Brad does a great job, an awesome job up here in the, at Red. Even when anglers call it a day, we are 
little star. Brad still grinds. The life and times of a winter fishing guy. And for the record, Brad wouldn't have it any other way. I basically have a five in the morning till seven at night job, but I think it's just, it's kind of my calling and I love to do it. And I'm gonna keep, keep on doing it as long as I can. You wanna see the fish? Will these three okay. beginner ice anglers get hooked on the great outdoors? Let's, Let's see girls. what Whoa. happens next. <laughs> okay, ready to go. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers. Connecticut. Ice Force. And by Seven Clans Casino. Hey, welcome back. You know, I like to say, introduce a kid to the great outdoors, and it's happening. In fact, some kids are learning how to ice fish. Travis Frank has the story. You look excited, Isabella. Yeah, <laughs> she's ready. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we gotta go in here, babe. We say it all the time. Remember to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. But when and how? Today it starts here, right in this bait shop. Allie, what do you want to catch today? Do you want to catch sunnies or crappies? Do Take both. Them. Okay, help me scoop them up in here. Just the ones with the blue eyes, right? Allie's three, Isabella four, and Lexi nine. Each girl excited to hook a fish. This is gonna be our bait today. You wanna to touch a worm? That's what the fish like to eat. Oh, that's gonna be a good one. That's gonna catch you a big fish. You wanna take a bite? <laughs> no. To the fish house. Woo! Worms in hand, we hit the ice. Our goal today is simple. Show them something they've never seen before. You got your worms? You got the minnows? All right, lead the way. Hop on in. Inside, a treat awaits. Have you girls ever seen what it looks like on the bottom of the lake before? Are you ready to? Yeah, you want to see the fish? OK. An underwater camera. I can see all three of you. Look at that, you're on TV. Reveals life below the ice. It's a fishy world, and these girls are now living in it. That's that's what the fish like to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Okay, be ready. Here they come. Real man, real man, real man. He's got it. Real hard. Oh. Good job. Hold your hands out. Okay, I'm gonna set him. He's gonna be wet. <laughs> you don't want to. Here he goes. My previous conception of what ice fishing was was sitting on a bucket in the middle of the uh, lake with no cover on. So when I saw all this, it was a pretty neat, uh, yeah. neat experience. Yeah. An experience that has changed right along with today's fishing technology. It's amazing to see that you know you can actually watch the fish. You know when you're when you're fishing, and I think it helps them learn and understand the whole concept. Because we can see the screen uh, with all the fish there, and I think they have almost as much fun watching the fish bite it as they do reeling it in. Whoa! You jumped out of the hole! You wanted to say hi! Should we let him go? Alright. And I think we're so digital nowadays that whether it's tablets or whether it's, you know, TV, whatever it is, video games, phones, they understand how to use all that technology and I think it just kind of paves the way for kids to be very involved in the new technology that we have in fishing. Heck. Oh my goodness, it's big! That's a big one. That is a big one. Good job, Good Lexi! Job. You want to show the girls? Whoop. <laughs> okay, ready to go. Introducing kids has never been easier or more fun. See all the fish that are leaving? Oh, here it comes. Something big is coming. Oh, there goes a northern. Whoa! Did you see that? He scared all the fish away. From giants below to a minnow cheese above. Minnow cheese! cheese. <laughs> these girls are hooked. I don't think there's ever a point that's too early to introduce them to fishing. <gasps> Look at how big he is! 
You can put both of your hands on him. Put both of your hands. You want to give him a little kiss? Oh. We took them and they were excited about picking out the minnows and getting the worms and, and kind of the whole bait shot process. Driving on the lake, getting in the fish house, it's all fun and it all kind of creates that excitement for when you catch your first fish. No matter how you introduce kids, one thing is certain, without a chance, They'll never know what they are missing. And the kids are the future, and um, it's very important for everybody who's anglers now to continue to pass along that tradition and, and that passion for fishing. Now it's up to them. If they want to come back and do it all over again. Do you want to come fishing again, Isabella? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You can put together a spectacular lunch. Coming up, it's time to go wild in the kitchen with our state fish, the walleye. Top it with some slaw. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard. Time now to go wild in the kitchen. Laura Shera teams up with Chef Paul to come up with this wild walleye recipe. <laughs> Many of us are looking for new ways to cook up that fresh caught walleye. Either if you're fishing on the ice or on the water, we always want to know what's the best shore lunch. So I'm here with Chef Paul from Firelight Grill House and Cocktail Bar, and today we're getting wild in the kitchen cooking up a walleye hoagie? That is correct. So with a couple of easy preparations you can do before you go out fishing, you can put together a spectacular lunch for yourself or you and your friends when you're out on the ice. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little bit of a dressing. What we're gonna do is first we're gonna just put a little bit of mustard in the bowl. Why don't you go ahead and put that garlic chili paste in the bowl, smoked paprika. Now we're gonna add a little bit of sherry vinegar. Go ahead and emulsify this. Now we have our dressing together and then we wanna make our slaw. We just take our Savoy cabbage, put some oil on it and I grilled it. Put that in the bowl, a little bit of carrots, a little sprinkle of smoked salt. We're just gonna add a little bit of the dressing, just enough to give it some moistness and to give it flavor. So now we're gonna make our orange and black pepper aioli, and you want to take the zest off the orange. Then we're gonna take the juice, and then we're gonna take two cloves of garlic, we're gonna take one egg yolk, and now we're ready to start to make our emulsion. So we're adding the black pepper, and then that's our orange and black pepper aioli. All you wanna do is you take your walleye filet, and I want you to rub it with some ranch dressing. So now, we're gonna take this filet. You're using a roasted corn flour. Cut your hoagie rolls in half. Just put a nice spread of ranch dressing on the top and bottom of your hoagie roll. Toast your bread first. You want a nice hot pan, but not too hot. It's gonna take about a minute to a minute and a half aside. See how it's actually starting to curl up? That's telling me that it's very close to being ready to turn. So that walleye is perfectly finished now. So let's take some of that orange and black pepper aioli and put it on the bottom of the roll. Then we're gonna put that walleye filet right down into the middle there. Top it with some slaw, and there's your walleye hoagie for the lake shore. All right, this looks amazing as always, but I have one tip when it comes to this recipe. And what is that? I'm thinking you better have a lot of confidence in your fishing ability, otherwise you might be eating a coleslaw sandwich. Or just go ahead and pack a turkey or a ham slice or two, just to hedge your bets. That's right, always have plan B. So I'm gonna dive in here and give it a little bite. That is so good. Hello, I'm Rob Jerislein, Managing Editor of the Outdoor News Publications. After three years of wolf hunting in Minnesota, the 2015 season appears in jeopardy after a federal judge returned the predators to the endangered species list last month. The decision relists wolves in three Great Lakes states, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan, which have a combined population of about 3,700 wolves. Minnesota's 2,400 wolves are now classified as threatened after originally being delisted in 2012. 
and they're back to being endangered in Wisconsin and Michigan. The ruling is the latest twist in more than a decade of court battles over the gray wolf, which has made a strong recovery in the region after being driven to near extinction in the lower 48 during the 19th century. This latest lawsuit was brought forth by the animal rights group Humane Society of the United States. The December 19th ruling from U.S. District Court Judge Beryl Howell in Washington, D.C. included the statement that earlier wolf hunting was arbitrary and capricious. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service officials haven't decided if they'll appeal Howell's 111-page decision, but effective with the ruling, no wolves can be killed in the region except in the defense of human life. Only government agents can take wolves if livestock depredation occurs. Wolf hunting remains controversial. Minnesota hunters and trappers took 272 wolves during the 2014 hunt, 22 more than the state's management quota. Though the DNR says that topping the quota doesn't harm the wolf population, that belief didn't prevent those who oppose wolf hunting in Minnesota from protesting in front of DNR's St. Paul headquarters last month. DNR leaders in Minnesota say they are mostly stuck while the issue plays out with federal agencies and courts, but they're interested in working with adjacent states and congressional officials to find a solution. Members of Minnesota's congressional delegation say they are weighing federal legislative action in the nation's capital. For continuing coverage of the wolf issue, read the print edition of Outdoor News or check us out online at OutdoorNews.com. I'm Rob Driesline. This week, our Minnesota Bound Classic gets a little squirrely. We take a look at this backyard critter that some view as a pest, while others can't help but marvel at their skills. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Tracker Boats and by Starkey Hearing Technologies. Time now for our Minnesota Bound Classic, and a classic it is if you're a bird feeder like I am, you're always at war with squirrels. Are you losing? Of course, here's why. Backyard squirrels, nice to have around, I suppose, if only the dang things weren't so fond of expensive bird seeds or so skilled at wrecking bird feeders. We try to foil these bird seed thieves, but usually to no avail. Not so with Scott Schultz. He decided to, well, get even. I thought, well, I can't get rid of all the squirrels, so I figured I'd come up with a feeder, and my criteria was I wanted them to work for the food. <laughs> Scott's working squirrel idea turned into squirrel fun. Somewhere, I don't know where the, the idea of making them bungee jump. Behold the squungy. Started out with just a piece of elastic, and uh, they chewed it and stole the corn, and it progressed to the metal spring and the chain and cable, and that's how it got started. This is nuts, said the squirrels. That seemed to work. It, it gave them something to eat and kept them away from the bird feeders for the most part. It turned out to be very funny to watch. To prove it, Scott has videoed their antics. They're spinning, they're swinging, twirling, they do everything. They, they hang upside down, the squungy holds two ears of corn, and they sometimes hold onto one and feed off the other, or they'll, they'll hang upside down and straddle the two corn. If you're gonna feed them anyway, you might as well get, you know, get some enjoyment out of watching them eat. In the end, the squirrels win. They get the food, we pay for the fun. It's a nutty deal, but hey, with squirrels, what do you expect? <laughs> wow. You know, you have to take your mittens off to the jumping ingenuity of hungry squirrels. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sheriff, of course, always the star of the show who likes to chase squirrels. Great. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. 
Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.